Good morning, everybody. Morning. This is Eliza. I'm with the Chamber of Commerce Hawaii. Um, and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, if at any point you can't see something, please let us know. Um, it, we can use the Q&A feature for questions. Um, and then um, Melly is here. Uh, we have an owl camera, just so you know. So um, she can get up and walk around and the camera will follow her. Um, oh, but, wow. but also if we speak, the camera will, will go to us. So um, we're doing it a little bit informal because we just wanna kind of have more of a discussion today with all of you guys. But um, just really quick, I wanna thank HTDC for making this possible. Um, this is through a grant with HTDC um, and the Chamber of Commerce is, is doing the um, accelerator program. Um, and I wanna thank Zippies for sponsoring it. And uh, also SBA, who is um, going to be speaking around 11 today. Um, so now I get to introduce Melly. Um, Melly is the co-founder of Mana Up. Um, if you're not familiar, it's a Hawaii-based initiative designed to build the state's next generation of CEOs in the retail and food product industry. Um, she offers 12-week programs and cohorts, which I'm sure she'll talk about a little bit. Um, she's also the president of Hawaii Venture Capital Association, um, which is an organization that seeks to foster entrepreneurial development through education, networking, and access to, access to capital. Um, she was also previously the head of Sultan Ventures, um, and she was born and raised in Honolulu, but she spent 10 years in Silicon Valley. That's a long time. Uh, <laughs> um, we're glad she came back, and um, she has been recognized pretty much by every magazine and organization that I can think of <laughs> in Hawaii, but uh, officially by Entrepreneur Magazine. Um, she's as one of five women to watch, um, as um, one of eight women leaders who are disrupting entrepreneurship. And she is a graduate of Cornell University. So um, I'm gonna let Melly take over. Um, let me make sure I pull up your um, your presentation. Is that working? Okay, yeah, okay. should be good. Okay. All right. And here's Melly. Do I get to presentation mode or is it okay like that? You can enter. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it says the PDF. Okay. You want to do, do a PowerPoint? No, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> hi, everyone online. Um, oh, hi. Nice to meet you guys. Um, so as Eliza mentioned, I'm Melly. I'm going to kind of just go quickly through some Mana Up stuff, but I want to make sure we have time for questions because I know um i can represent a lot of areas of business so um, i want to make sure i'm not just driving certain things and you guys can ask literally any question you want to me um cool so you know we really started mana up looking at the challenges in hawaii that you know folks can't live here we've lost you know millions of dollars of exports over the year um over the years um and, and tourism of course is becoming you know such a huge piece with military so how do we look at diversifying our economy um and so really what the point of Mana Up is, is around how do we create a shared shared vision for Hawaii and the shared future for Hawaii um, that can diversify, um, look at sustainable tourism, um, look at meaningful jobs, as well as looking at regenerative agriculture as well. So we started Mana Up back in 2017. This is my co-founder, Brittany. Um, and really as an economic development initiative, we looked at product-based businesses. Back in the day, everything was about tech, tech only. Um, and that was like really synonymous with like innovation or startups, et cetera. Um, and so we really wanted to turn things on its head and look at real reasons around like what are baked in um, competitive advantage or regional strength that Hawaii has that I'm we gonna, can leverage. I'm going to stop you because I, okay. I don't think they can see the. Oh, they're only seeing the. Yeah. Oh, you got to share screen on Zoom. Should be sharing screen. Sorry, guys. I think you're sharing on this tape screen, but you're not sharing on that. Sorry, technical difficulties. One second. Um, I can just keep talking while you're doing it. Okay. Um, um, so we really thought about like what what are the key regional strengths or competitive advantage that Hawaii does have that we can really think about, you know, what kinds of companies could make sense to not just start here, but stay here and thrive here. And so that's really how the idea of Mana Up was born. So with Mana Up, we focus on particular companies in the consumer brands industry. 
Uh, they have to be within four categories, food, um, food, health and beauty, home, and retail. Um, they need to be elevating the brand of Hawaii, um, as well as being at least 100,000 or more in annual revenue. So our accelerator is really, really focused on scaling as opposed to more startup formation. Mm -hmm. um, and that's great because there's lots of resources here that all kind of connect with each other, which is nice, right? So we're just at a different stage than some of the others, which is mm -hmm. awesome. We work with everybody. Um, they have to want to scale past Hawaii, not just serve the Hawaii market mm -hmm. um, and be good for export. Mm -hmm. So that's really how it was born. And so... Um, um, anyway, so yeah. Um, so we started off as an accelerator. Mm -hmm. We had 10 companies. Uh, we now are actually in interviews for our ninth program. We have 85 graduates. Um, and it's a six month program, very intense. Mm -hmm. We help solve business challenges, um, whether it's packaging, branding, narrative, finance, the whole gamut, mm -hmm. uh, but hyper-focused just on product-based businesses. Mm -hmm. um, we also provide sales channels um, and really help to expand um, and scale to global markets. So um, <laughs> you're good. Um, anyway, I'm just gonna get through all the mod so we, so we get to the other pieces. Um, so we we actually, um, let's see what else is going on here. Um, Thank you. All right. Can you guys see everybody online? Everyone's good? All right, cool. Um, okay, so that's more on the criteria I was just talking about. Um, a little bit. Okay, here we go. Um, uh, okay. How come it's not advancing? Oh, there we go. All right, so this is a little bit more on the portfolio. We require that the companies are headquartered here. It's important the jobs are here, decision making is here. So that's why we require it. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be a Hawaii headquartered company. 74% of our companies manufacture here. So I know that's important to this group. Um, we don't require it, but it's great that we have about three quarters of them are manufacturing here. And that's really important, especially as we're you know, in ledge session right now, the MAP grant is a big uh, piece that's supported by government, the Manufacturing Assistance Program. Mm -hmm. So that's a grant that supports um, local manufacturing uh, with a 20% uh, rebate uh, based on um, being approved uh, for additional equipment that you need, you have needs for. 60% uh, are sourcing raw ingredients locally. So I know that's important to some of you folks here. Um, and that's something we support as well. Really, how do we connect folks with farmers? Um, they're really looking at value add um, for a lot of the diversifying agriculture here. Half of our companies are native Hawaiian owned and 70% female founded, which is awesome. Um, why does this keep doing that? Okay. All right. Um, this is a little bit more on the economic impact of the companies we work with. So, you know, this is important as we're all building our companies here. This is, um, we're all contributing to revenue in the state. And so last year, um, the companies represented 72 million in revenue, um, average annual revenue of 910,000, a 33% mean growth rate and 874 jobs. The interesting number is that 42% of the um, revenue was outside of Hawaii, which is really the kind of money we want to see. We want to see outside money coming in. Um, that's not going to impact folks here. Um, tourism is very impactful in that. Um, okay, I don't know what's going on. Okay. How do I not, how can, I think it's just slow. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry guys, this is not normal for me, but I think we're trying to do too much. On okay, so this next slide is, I think it's just slow. Anyway, so the next slide is, um, examples of the companies that we work with. You may recognize some of the um, logos here. So as you can see here, there's four categories, food, fashion, home, health, and beauty. Um, and they're all growing. I think we've had a, maybe a few companies, um, like one got sold and a couple are no longer in existence due to co-founder issues. But for the most part, they're all thriving, um, which is really awesome to see this industry growing. Yeah. Uh, this is a little bit more on the diversified leadership and family-owned business. Uh, this is a little bit more on our House of Mana Up Retail Initiative. So we've got six stores, 
um, and more coming this year. Uh, we have a Japan initiative. We did a really cool pop-up in Haneda Airport, really helping more companies get over to Japan. And we're actually doing one in New York next month, a uh, four-day event, um, and then going back to Japan again later this year. Um, this is our showcase, which we do every year. Everyone's invited. <laughs> you take over Bloomingdale's um, and really create an amazing community event showcasing the different products. And then, of course, have an online broadcasted show really supporting more companies, um, increasing their e-commerce e and online presence. Uh, this is a little bit more on showcase and what happens at showcase. Eliza, did you come to showcase? I didn't get to come. Um, I think okay, well, this year. I know. I didn't come this year. So I'm going to talk a little bit more around telling your story um, and then go into a little bit on local sourcing. And then I'm happy to talk more about investments and venture capital um, if there's interest. And again, you guys, if you have questions as they come up, just put it in the chat or feel free to just chime in. And we got a small group, so um, I don't mind. Don't feel like you have to wait till the end to ask. So just if anything comes up, just ask. So this is a little bit more on the CPG market in Hawaii. And so really thinking about what are their tailwinds happening right now? One, folks are looking for authenticity, transparency. What are the ingredients? Flipping over the package. Who's the founder? What do they stand for? What are their values? Those are all things that people didn't care about as much, I'd say 10 to 15 years ago. It was kind of faceless. You had these big box brands. And if you weren't a legacy brand, people were a little bit like weary, like, oh, what's this weird thing? That's not the case anymore. And that's awesome for all of you folks, because as you have starting brands that people don't know about, they're actually more interested in doing that now than before, right? Mm -hmm. So they're also looking at um, connection to culture, mm -hmm. um, something that's a little bit different, um, something that's healthy. And so all these things are all tailwinds that are actually helping for small businesses to have that leg up that they wouldn't have had um, before. Hawaii is, of course, a globally loved brand, globally recognized brand. brand. It's aspirational. So if any of you folks are leveraging or elevating the brand of Hawaii, that's that's all good stuff. I would highly suggest it. Um, so those are just some of the key stats um, that I think are all really beneficial for folks right now starting up, especially in Hawaii. Um, the, there is a huge importance of storytelling. And so this is an example of one of our companies, Aloha Modern, um, that really kind of, they do these really beautiful prints around sense of place and telling a little bit of a story behind each print. Um, now that's not, I don't know what everyone's um, products are. I know your product, um, but you know, just depending on what, what it is, there are stories that you can pull from, like, where are you sourcing the product from? Who are the farmers you're working with? Like, mm -hmm. how do we start to tell some of these stories, um, that can really help people feel connected to your product, create that trust and those, that value system, mm -hmm. um, and be able to really, um, lift up in the curtain because a lot of these big box companies, don't want to, right? Because yeah. they're putting junk stuff in, right? There isn't a cool founder story. It's some huge corporation in who even knows where. Um, so they are less interested in doing that. And so that's your competitive advantage, right? Open yeah. up those curtains. Um, so these are just some key aspects to um, storytelling and narrative, you know, about sharing um, your business mission. How'd you come up with the idea? What is that challenge you're trying to solve? Um, those kinds of things like that, you know, the unique ingredients that are coming into the product, um, you know, just other things like that. So this is a great list, which you guys can have access to this deck afterwards and have this. Um, this is a little bit more on Instagram for business. So, you know, this is, Instagram is a great platform back in the day before, well, we've had cell phones now for a while now, so I'm not going to go way back that far, but we've, and we've had iPhones now for a while, but I would say, with Instagram, TikTok, that's really providing a platform where people, when they pick up a package, they're flipping it over, seeing who the founder is. And in seconds, they can get on Instagram, TikTok and find out who you are. Yeah. Right. And that's awesome because you want people to know because you're not trying to hide things. Right. So that's a great um, benefit that you've had now that people didn't have before. Right. Yeah. You kind of see something you're like, I have no idea what this is. And then you have to start digging, digging, digging. But now this is a, a great platform to actually use it to your advantage. So, you know, tell your brand story, um, do some stuff behind the scenes. People love to see how you're making it and you're not trying to hide things, right? Right. Um, here's how to optimize more for Instagram. Um, really looking at hashtags, you know, creating a great compelling bio, looking at what's trending, um, leverage what's trending globally. 
um, that can you can leverage what you're doing, right? So what what are people interested in? I mean, especially with the vegan cheese, like that's huge. What are some of these bigger trends happening with vegan um, books or like with things like that that are evolving? Mm -hmm. You know, leverage those kinds of stories. Do you want to um, share what your business is? Um, sure. Yeah. yeah. Everybody heard. Yeah, so um, I own a vegan cheese company here in Hawaii, and we use primarily macadamia nuts as our main ingredient, which create a beautiful, rich, creamy cheese alternative. And of course, we're using a primarily uh, local ingredient, which is great for sustainability um, and quality. So, um, and the uh, plant-based industry is, I believe, the future. So we're happy to be um, just a part of it now, and we see the growth continuing, and we hope to continue to grow and, and flourish here in Hawaii, and um, we're pretty much 50-50 between retail and online at this point, so we're really interested in growing our online pre presence as well, um, so we're just um, and expanding the product line and just kind of diving into this kind of growing industry. So a lot of lot of demand, I feel. I mean, it's still a small market compared. Are you in any stores yet? Um, yeah, we're in um, most of the down to earth locations. Oh, uh, we work with FarmLink and um, a couple other specialty stores throughout the island chain. That's awesome. So about 15 stores. And what's it called, the company? Um, the Vegan Cheese Shop. The Vegan Cheese Shop. Mm, yeah. So very simple, straightforward name. Um, Might be hard for SEO. Search engine optimization. Could be, I was hoping it would be helpful because of the straightforward, but it might might be her. Yeah, because there's if you if you, if you Google that, what what comes up? Well, if you Google the whole thing, then I I do come up. If you have it busy cash, put in um the vegan cheese yeah. shop, I do pop up. Maybe try to do it in incognito mode and see what comes up. Like just vegan cheese. Or, or the vegan cheese shop. I mean, I'm just saying it, it, there's no kind of um, unique name. So it's hard to um, get first first or second placement. You're getting it because you've looked at it so much from your cash. Like oh, I see. I see. Yeah. So go in I incognito see. mode and look it up and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Cool. Well, congratulations. That's why we have the expert here. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So when I was naming the company, it was, yeah, I was kind of thinking that it would be helpful to have you can choose in the name just for both you know, mm -hmm. transparency and um, for, you know, SEO. So, but I yeah. guess it could. I think, well, also the, the macadamia nuts are from Hawaii too, right? Yes. Oh, absolutely. So is there any kind of, is, that, is Hawaii at, at all part of the brand? So um, that's what I'm trying to figure out how to incorporate. Like, I mean, it could, I could just rename vegan cheese shop Hawaii, you know, like kind of like how Dean DeLuca, Dean DeLuca Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, so trying to, yeah, I am trying to figure out how to incorporate that in because originally, you know, just like starting with just a brand to hopefully be a larger brand, but of course, connecting with Hawaii being here and keeping the headquarters here, but also thinking about a broader mm -hmm. market in the future. So, um, but we are definitely a Hawaii brand and that is our, our main yeah. product. So um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to bring that in. Yeah. I would think about that because Hawaii is such a strong brand as we just discussed. Oh, absolutely. It's aspirational. Mm -hmm. it, people believe that anything grown here has magical powers mm -hmm. and that's a good thing. So your yeah. academia nuts are from here. So Absolutely. you should, they are, you should think they are very, I'm sure they are. It's great. It, everything's cured. Um, but it's a good thing, right? So I would consider thinking about how you incorporate Hawaii more. So people know in the brand that it's yeah. the math nuts are from here. This is a, you know, they're going to think it's better. If yeah. I have a choice between a vegan cheese from Hawaii or a vegan cheese from like Florida, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to pick Hawaii yeah. pretty much for almost anything. Yeah. So it, just think about how you can leverage that. To make that, uh, yeah, that sales process a little bit better, um, easier for you. So Are there other folks on the question? Yeah. Um, the question is from Melissa McLaughlin, and she asks, um, Aloha Meli, thank you so much for being here. Can you recommend any classes that will assist in Instagram posting and growth? That's a good question. I'll have to get back to you guys. I don't have any off the top of my head. I know there's a lot though. 
I know um, there's a like WCA actually has a pretty intensive social media course that they oh, do for they? small businesses. Yeah. Um, is it through the Mink Center? I think it oh, is. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a great, yeah. great um, resource. Um, they've got a lot of great folks who are mentors um, and have a lot of awesome classes. Um, and if any female founders are on the call, um, they have a really awesome female um, fellows program called the Mink uh, Fellow. I think Mink Leaders. Yeah. Mink Leaders. Yeah, it's a really, really wonderful program. I'm on the advisory board. Oh, right. Um, okay, cool. So I'll keep going. Uh, this is a little bit more on product photography. So obviously, you know, these are just some quick tips before we get into some other things. But, you know, you want to make sure you got clear background, keep things bright, light, um, really have it focusing on the product as opposed to whatever else is going on, on the left-hand side. Right. <laughs> Um, this is more kind of the aspirational lifestyle. So mm -hmm. I'm sure you're doing stuff like this with your cheese. Um, you know, how people envision themselves using the product. Yeah. Right. right. So you see this cute girl on the mat, you know, at the beach. So that's a use case scenario. How do you, how do you help people envision how they're going to use the product? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and the aspirational lifestyle that they're hoping for by utilizing your product. Um, Clavio, we love Clavio. Um, that's really like email marketing on crack. Um, it's much better than I think than many other um, of the platforms um, due to the analytics and some other aspects of being able to create um, different audiences. Um, email marketing is one of your strongest ways to grow your um, sales and keep it for yourself, right? So if you think about Instagram, you're on someone else's platform. Mm -hmm. You don't have their contact information mm -hmm. necessarily, right? Mm -hmm. You get kicked off the platform, something happens, you have no controls. Your email marketing, that's your data, right? You can start to, you really should always have an email marketing um, strategy um, that you're growing right now. Even if it's starting with a newsletter once a month, that's just sharing some tips, tricks, some other things going on. Um, just start to build that up. Allow people to sign up for it on your website. There's literally no reason why you shouldn't do that because it doesn't hurt you, right? Just mm -hmm. someone may want to sign up and they can't. Now you've lost a customer, a potential customer. So I, I'm a big believer in um, email marketing. Make it personal. So this is stuff that we do with our gift sets. You know, we've got story cards, um, you know, personalized gift cards. Uh, you know, the little touches, that little bit of like delight is important. Um, I'll open the door. Sorry about that. Hi. Okay. Yeah. So a little bit of that, um, which is always that little bit of delight. Um, behind the scenes, I was talking about that earlier. Um, you know, people want to see how you're making the product. Um, you know, it's, you're not putting weird funky chemicals in. Ideally, you're not. Um, so, you know, you're not going to give anyone any of your trade secrets, of course, right. but people love to see the behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it makes it almost like more personal. Educating your audience. So I was saying earlier tips and tricks, or did you know, um, you know, those are all people love to learn that more how to use it. So for your cheese, it's like, pair it. what's your favorite way to pair it with this or that? Right. So it's like, people love that kind of stuff. How do they use it? Um, Akamai Tips, this is an example of one of our companies. I'm really showing folks how to use the product um, or how they like to use it. So this is Chelsea um, and she does a whole thing on, you know, you've got this really awesome serum and kind of how she uses it, the way, you know, what she does with her routine. People love that kind of stuff as well. Um, Co-marketing with local companies, of course, you know, this comes along once you're a little bit more established or you may find another company that, you um, is aligned, right? So maybe for you with the vegan cheese, it could be a company that's not a competitor, but it's someone that's really, um, really pushing forward uh, plant-based, right? Mm -hmm. It could be like a cool thing you're doing with down to earth or even just something that is maybe health related, right? Mm -hmm. um, that could be more like Peaky Bikes or something like that, where you've got a cool co-branded opportunity that's really fueling each other through the values that are aligned with both companies. So this is an example of um, a collab that we have with Bank of Hawaii, um, where we have our featured product inside the banks um, and a whole bunch of other things going on on the website. But it's really aligned values with them supporting small business um, and really looking at the resources that they have that they can be hoping that they can be providing for um, companies as a 
key stakeholder, which is important for the growth of businesses here. We all have different stakeholders and local corporations a big one. This is another one that we do with Hawaiian Airlines, um, which is a Meet the Maker series um, where we actually share a little bit behind the scenes about different makers and then this goes on there. Our showcase is another example of um, ways that we're trying to get those stories out to folks. Um, mm -hmm. How do you create a platform where you've got eyeballs, um, not only from a broadcast standpoint, but a live stream where we partner with about 40 different companies that are all live streaming the showcase as well, which is why we had 5.6 million people watch the show. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. It was more impressions. We only had 127,000 watch the show, but we had 5.6 million impressions. But that's because of our partnerships. Um, but this is just more examples. Um, so these are just some key takeaways from the storytelling aspect, um, which again, you guys will have access to these slides. So local product sourcing, a lot of our companies are sourcing local, 51 of our 85 are sourcing from different islands. Um, this slide will look messed up. But um, it's important, um, and as you folks are sourcing, it's important to have great relationships with your farmers and have a lot of relationships because yeah. you never know what could happen. I mean, even just looking at the coffee industry with that beetle, like suddenly... Yeah everything gone on Maui or, you know, just different aspects of that. Mm -hmm. um, so it is important to have those relationships and being able to have open communication where they're kind of giving you a heads up on what's mm -hmm. going on, especially with pricing changes and, yeah. you know, a lot going on, especially in academia is with Mauna Loa, uh, you know, there's right. just a lot yeah. going on. Yeah, for sure. Um, Island Harvest. Is yes, that, Island Harvest is downstairs. Yeah, yeah, go talk perfect. to him. Talk okay, to thank you. For sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll give him a heads up. Um. So, you know, these are just even more local sourcing that our companies are looking for. It's hard. I mean, we'd like to source more, more things locally, but we mm -hmm. just don't have them. Yes. Or we don't have enough of them or consistent supply. Right. So for a lot of the companies, they are sourcing local. They want to source yeah. local. Sometimes the prices get too high yeah. or the inconsistency. So I always say should you should always also have an ability to source from someplace else. Mm -hmm. Because the worst thing would be that you can't produce your product because or consistently because of the sourcing. Right. So a lot of our companies, they'll source some local, some not, just depending on what, what it is, which, you know, again, we're trying to build companies here. Right. Like Ulu's been an issue, right? Oh, because of the season. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, some of the companies are having to source some of their Ulu from Samoa. It is what it is. Um, this is more on local sourcing. Does anyone have questions on sourcing? Just want to make sure, because I said I was going to cover that. Okay, cool. Uh, let me know if you do. Um, this is a little bit in terms of consumer preference. Um, you know, looking at, you know, more consumers are looking to try more new products, which I talked about before. Uh, but they're trying new brands because of these different elements that are all actually weirdly very aligned with Hawaii, right? Sustainability, you know, the quality of the ingredients, the health aspect, the values of the founder of the company. Um, and those kinds of things, the personalized relationships or the personalized touch, right? It feels different than you just getting it from some faceless legacy brand. Mm -hmm. So all those things are taking, um, are being considered heavily, way more than before. And again, this is opening the door more for more local businesses coming to the market. And justifying a higher price tag. And justifying a higher price tag. People are willing to pay more. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. They want to support local. They want to know the ingredients are good. They want to be able to pronounce all the ingredients in the back yeah, of the exactly. label, right? So that's important and they'll pay for it. And they'll pay for the they'll pay for Hawaii too. Um also just a, a little bit more on stats around folks that you know have tried a new brand and then stick with it, right? Right. So all those things again, all this is a great tailwind and really great opportunity. Like why is it working now? It's working now because people are already looking for this stuff. Um, you know, more folks are getting from Hawaii are getting recognized on a global scale. So these are just a couple examples of some of our companies that are not being recognized as best in Hawaii. They're being recognized as best in the world. Um, so that's super, super awesome to be seeing Hawaii on the chocolate, like winning best in show at, you know, the Salon du Chocolat in Paris, um, having Big Island Coffee Roasters winning best hotel coffee in the world by Forbes. Um, these are really, these are real um, and it's pretty awesome to see. So I'm going to stop there because um, stop sharing there um, and open up more for um, questions as well as talking. I don't know what is wrong with this. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm good. I'm done. Um, talk a little bit more with uh, questions you guys have as well as talk a little bit more about venture capital or investments if that is of interest. Anybody? I can't even see anybody who's on here. 
-hmm. And they just, they're. Oh, okay, cool. Got it. Um, so I can talk more about investing. Is anybody on the call or in the room looking to raise money? Well, I think um, definitely at, at some point, maybe in the next year, over the next year, looking into that. My first step is, so I haven't applied for Mana Up yet, but next year, the next cohort, I will be applying. So that's step one in growth. And then, but the other will be on ramping up manufacturing production and we'll probably be needing and looking into investors. And so I'm curious about venture capitalists and what your take on is like at what point and um, who to kind of start with, mm -hmm. angel or venture or just seeking out Warren Buffett, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, probably is a lot. Oh, barely, just barely. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I would say, I'm sorry, where are you manufacturing? Where are you producing? So in Honolulu. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. You said in, um, yeah, off of kind of in the ward area. Okay. Yeah. Just, and what's your production like volume on? Um, so it's a uh, pretty boutique at the moment, probably about 300 units a week. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. What size is the, are the blocks? Uh, three ounce. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah, I would say in terms of raising, you want to have the company's valuation or value be as big as possible before yeah. you start raising, right? Yeah. Because if you're the valuation of the company isn't very high, let's just say right now it's worth, I'm just giving a very round number, a hundred thousand dollars. I'm right. just saying just mm -hmm. that it's very round. Right. If you're valued at a hundred thousand and I'm, you need $50,000 to grow. Yeah. And I give you $50,000, mm -hmm. which isn't that much money. Right. I just took half your company. Right. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, it's ideal to get your production ramped up, your sales channels mm -hmm. ramped up as much as you can, right. um, that you can kind of, uh, you know, put together yourself so that maybe you get to the $500,000 yeah. value or whatever. I'm just mm -hmm. saying right. double, triple, quadruple. Right. Um, and then also think about like, what are those key, um, what are those key uh, equipment, what kind of key equipment do you need, right? Mm -hmm. Um, other things like that that are important from mm -hmm. a production standpoint. Do you have any team members yet? Or um, just one. Okay. So, and their, their production yeah. sales. Yeah. Um, a little of both. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. I know. Yeah. This is, I want to try your cheese. I have to go get it down to earth. Okay. Yeah. And I just launched cheesecake. Cool. Which I'm very excited about. I think that will be a big market. Yeah, that sounds awesome. So it's macadamia nut cheesecake, like, you know, kind of more individual size right now, maybe larger in the future, but I think that will be yeah. a good draw as well. That's, awesome. That's super awesome. Um, So yeah, I would say you'd start off with angels. Actually, you'd probably start off with friends and family. Mm -hmm. So it's like, they call F, F, and F, friends, mm -hmm. family, and fools. Um. <laughs> <laughs> in the same <laughs> um, and the reason they say that is because normally friends and family know you they trust you they have a relationship mm -hmm. so they're willing to take that kind of pretty big risk because it's about the relationship mm -hmm. um, and believing in the in you as an entrepreneur and being able to execute what you say you're going to do right mm -hmm. so that's why the friends and family the fool's aspect is it's a lot more risky to be at that level with someone like you don't know yeah. So let's just say, you know, I decided, oh yeah, I'll give you like 50 grand. That's pretty, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be called foolish, but it is in that sense where I don't know you. Right. 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 So that's why they say fool. It's not like it's a bad idea, but it's, that's the whole point of it. Um, so typically it's the friends and family round. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next would be sometimes angel. Mm -hmm. um, and that there's a great angel, Hoy Angels group here mm -hmm. um, that, typically doesn't invest in product businesses. I okay. would say they do more tech and real estate. Okay. Um, I haven't found them to be like very supportive on the product side, mm -hmm. uh, but it's great to pitch and get that kind of practice. Yeah. Definitely. Um, the next piece would be venture capital. So Mana Up has a venture capital fund. Okay. Um, we just are about to kind of finish our first fund and we're raising our second, which I can't talk about too much because, um, <clears throat> It, due to some SEC like limitations. Anyway, so yeah, but we will have a second fund um, later this year. So we do invest only in product-based businesses that are headquartered here. So those are options. There's also, of course, loans. 
Um, mm -hmm. And the banks, I think, are a lot more um, easier to work with mm -hmm. now. Um, and we've got great relationships, as does Eliza and other folks, um, as to great banks that are, are doing some of these kinds of loans. Um, a lot of the challenge with the loans though, is there's um, a little bit more of like the personal kind of like liability, which is tied mm -hmm. to them, which can be challenging. Um, there's also like CDFIs um, are also grants, especially if you're in agriculture, there's a lot of money out there mm -hmm. um, that's essentially free money. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's really great. And then there's also a lot more social impact funds as well. Um, they're looking for that quadruple bottom line, um, depending on what the product is. Hi, what's your name? Hi, Anika from Rep Ed Case's office. Nice to meet everyone. Oh, have I met you before? Maybe over Zoom, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm just here to listen and learn, and thanks so much for okay, having me. Yeah. Now, you want to talk a little bit about more up in the cohort and how you, you know, get to that level of applying and what, what they need to do? Yeah, and I can, I'm not going to try to pull up the slides anymore. Because <laughs> yeah. It's just not a thing for me right now. Um, so, Mana Up, uh, we have a six month program. Uh, we take in 10 to 12 companies a year, and it's a very intensive program where we're helping to solve business challenges. We do a deep dive with each company for two hours. We fly to their location or drive if it's on Oahu mm -hmm. um, and really dig into the guts of like what's going on with the company, like what's holding the company back. Mm -hmm. um, and that really drives the one-on-one -on -one, um, meetings that we have every week with the company. It's 30 minutes every week on Zoom. Um, and we create a mutually agreed upon list upon what we're working on, which will be totally different for each company. And it's confidential unless the company wants to share with other companies. Mm -hmm. um, it's confidential on our side. So let's just say for one particular one, it's like a rebrand or packaging, um, narr narrative, legal, um, finance. Uh, it could. There's so many weird things that we've worked on with folks. Um, and, it, and we have a great arsenal of ventures and of course, partner resources like you folks, I guess, PA. Um, that we uh, send people to. So, if, you know, we don't like to duplicate efforts. If we say, hey, you've got this issue and these guys would be great to help you, we'll make that introduction. Uh, we actually do have a lot of resources that come in, like the director will come in, or uh, you come in before. Oh, no. Maybe oh, someone else on the team. Yeah, yeah someone else on the team. Um, we'll come in and kind of share in layman's terms, like what they actually do. Because I think a lot of times these, brochures with like fine print that says all this stuff nobody gets it so then nobody comes in <laughs> so it's a lot of times a lot better when you can actually have someone come in and talk to you and say hey like you I'll give an example of the foreign trade zone people are like what is that and I have no idea how that's going to help me mm -hmm. because you just don't get it but then when they come in like the director comes in and says hey this is actually awesome from a tax standpoint because you don't have to pay the tax on it until it leaves the, the zone. Okay. So it's a cash flow thing that's actually mm -hmm. really beneficial. Um, so there's just things where you actually can shift it and tell it in layman's terms, be like, oh, I get it. Like if I got this huge shipment coming in, then I don't have to pay the taxes until I'm actually, it's leaving the door when it's being sold. I have all that cash flow that I'm not just floating while it's sitting there in storage, right? So that's like now very interesting to me. Yeah. Um, so that's some of the stuff we do. The the one-on-ones, again, really are focused on like very specific things we're working on. And it's a fluid list. It could be, we checked that off already or something came in that we didn't know about early on. Um, so that list is always changing um, depending on the needs of the company. The workshops we host every Tuesday, mm -hmm. um, this is six months. So we actually host 12 workshops. We do a six week intensive where we're doing workshops every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We start at one o'clock, we end around six, and then we have a little bit of Palhana afterwards. We bring people in to talk. We, I think we've had some folks from your office come in, oh, awesome. um, just depending on who's in town. Uh, but it, that, that point of that is we're big believers in collision, like getting smart people in a room together, conversations happen and we get out of the way. We're not here to over facilitate. So that's why we just invite people and see what happens. Right. Um, We'll do an implementation break. So we got feedback from a lot of the entrepreneurs that it's like drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> so they're like, it's just so many good things. Yeah. I don't know what to do with all of it. Yeah. Um, but so that's why we started making our program from 12 weeks to six months. So we'll okay. do six weeks intensive of workshops every Tuesday. We fly everybody in. So if mm -hmm. it's a company from Kauai, Big Island, wherever, mm -hmm. uh, where our partner is Hawaiian Airlines and they actually support flights. 
Right. Um, so everybody gets the equal amount of like services and opportunity. Awesome. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. So everybody flies in. Um, and then we'll do a four week implementation break. We're still meeting with all the companies one on one, but uh, we're not doing workshops. So everybody can kind of catch up. <laughs> then we go back into six weeks of workshops. Um, and then the last three weeks are focused on showcase. And showcase is the big event um, that's a huge community event that we had 1,800 people last year take over. We took over the third floor of Bloomingdale's. Um, and then we also had a broadcast of the show, which is really sharing the stories of these entrepreneurs. There's online sales happening and then all the live stream with our partners like Hawaiian Airlines, Kings Hawaiian, Hawaiian Host, and folks that have great reach in the mainland as well, mm -hmm. but also have a great reach here. So it's really um, thinking about how do we kind of bring Hawaii to the world. Yeah. So that's uh, more on the program. And what do they, where do they have to be at their business in order to apply? Yeah. So um, they have to be at 100000 or more in annual revenue or tracking for it. So maybe tracking at like 10,000, even if you're just kind of getting to that level mm -hmm. um, is, is good. Um, they have to be headquartered here. Mm -hmm. They have to be a consumer brands company and retail value add health and beauty or home. You need to elevate the brand of Hawaii as part of their narrative, as part of their brand. Um, want to scale past Hawaii, not just service the white market. Um, be good for e-commerce mm -hmm. and good for export. So people thought we were crazy when we had all this criteria. They're like, how are you even going to get any companies? No, that's good. Um, but it's every year we have more and more companies. We actually have 160 applications this year. So yeah. we're doing about 60 interviews. I'm in the middle of it right now. And do you have, um, is there a specific number that you choose every time or it just varies? We say 10. Oh, okay. But Brittany and I can't always agree on all of yeah. them. So yeah. we'll start getting okay. into our discussion. <laughs> We've gone up to 12 one year, but yeah. we literally, that was like the max we can do. And the reason it's so small is yeah. because it's so intensive. Right. Um, what's neat is now that we have 85 alumni, two years ago, we really started building on our alumni program. Right. So the six months is just like the intensive. Right. And then you move into our alumni programming and that's even more robust actually, but not as intense. It's just a lot of stuff that's really specific. So for example, we've got six stores. So we continue working with all the companies. Sometimes we're their largest buyer. Mm -hmm. So we're buying over half of their inventory yeah. um, and being able to move it through our sales channels. Um, we've got great partnerships like with Hawaiian Airlines, with Whole Foods, with Foodland. So those are really great because we're able to get more folks into the into those stores pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and even having highlighted areas like in DFS, we have a home on up section, um, which is kind of cool um, yeah. in the airports as well. Um, so the alumni program, we also have something called our Wayfinder series. Mm -hmm. So that's for companies, which is kind of cool. All the companies are headquartered here. That's mandatory. Mm -hmm. And they're now growing. They're at 100,000. Our goal was to help grow 100 companies earning 10 million or more in annual revenue. So what would a billion dollars do for Hawaii? What would that look like from a job standpoint? Because that's the whole goal, right? Is yeah. like, how do we create critical mass of job opportunity? C-suite, executive level, decision-making kinds of jobs here, the kinds of jobs that are going to help folks to be able to not just to be able to stay here and have opportunity that are interesting. Um, and so we have this Wayfinder series that is um, for solving challenges for million dollar plus companies. So that's where we totally switch gears and look at challenges that companies have at the million dollar level. And those are going to be challenges around hiring. Mm -hmm retail strategy as they go into the mainland, um, governance as some of the companies are now uh, getting investors mm -hmm. and they have boards. Mm -hmm. um, so how do they learn how to create um, board level um, relationships and create that governance that's really going to take the company to the next level and not have some board member that got on because they made an investment driving the governance of, um, of, of, of the board, mm -hmm. right? So that's, people are like, wait, what is that? Uh, but yeah. that's really cool because these are very next level challenges that yeah. I think there hasn't been much programming around that because mm -hmm. there's been a lot of focus on startups, mm -hmm. um, which is great. Yeah. Um, but now it's like we're at this next level, which thank goodness, because that's the whole point. Yeah. The point of it is not to have a whole bunch of companies like struggling and yeah. living in, you know, whatever your the basement, like, you know, whatever. Okay. The point of it is to create companies that are actually working, yeah. that are creating jobs and, and revenue here. So now that we're at this level, over half of our companies are at a million plus in revenue. Right. Um, now we're looking at what are those challenges that they're going to have now that they didn't have going through the original program? How are we going to help them get to 10? 
and then beyond. And that's when things get really interesting. Yeah. Um, so that's where a lot of our focus is now. Um, and, and that's, that's a wayfinder. Sorry. That's our wayfinder okay. series. Yeah. So that's um, invitation only, um, mostly for companies that have come through Mana Up. And mm-hmm. then sometimes we'll have ones that just really make sense for a particular focused area. Mm-hmm. Um, and then some of the companies are ones we've invested in. Uh, but that's been really successful. Uh, so that's kind of some of the initiatives that we're building out now, like with our Haneda, our Japan event, we had a three week pop up, the governor came out um, and that was really to open doors in Japan. So it's kind of working alongside like the Hong Kyu and the Tokyo gift show, like what a lot of what DBED's doing um, mm-hmm. and getting them into these big fairs. Um, our focus was really on um, partnering with the airport and creating a hub mm-hmm. that com- we got three new companies into Japan. So a lot of it's around the regulations. Like the regulatory aspect of getting into the country is insane, okay, yeah. especially for food. Right. Um, and then also getting the importer and exporter and distributor, right? So having those relationships um, to be able to have it actually make sense. A lot of times it's hard to get these folks because the volumes are so low. So we have relationships now with folks that are willing to take on these like way smaller accounts that, of course, the goal is to get them bigger. Um the other aspect of it is, um, you know, we were working with H Hawaii Tourism Japan and creating, really keeping Hawaii front of mind in Japan, mm-hmm. right? So as Japanese people can't come here right now because the yen is so weak, it's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. We can't afford to come here. Right. We can afford to go there right now, which is nice, but that's not going to help our economy here. Um, but it's around how do we create that marketing and where people still can buy that product in Japan, mm-hmm. smell that candle, be yeah. excited, you know, have the cookies and be excited that they can't wait to come here, right? So we're staying in front of mind. Mm-hmm. So it's around the marketing of Hawaii, but also people being able to participate and being able to buy product and getting product over there as well. Um, similar to what we're doing in New York, which is at the end of this month, we're doing a four-day pop-up taking over a two-story building in Soho in, uh, in partnership with Shopify. Nice. Um, so that's going to be awesome. 25 of our entrepreneurs are flying out. Um, we've got a whole Maui activation area. Uh, we're doing a big give back for Maui and it's a May Day, Lay Day, Mother's Day theme. Awesome. Um, so helping folks that have accounts or contacts in, in New York that they're trying to foster. Mm-hmm. Um, even having the meeting planners that do a lot of the big hotel and convention center have big clients in New York. We want everyone to use the space and just invite people to come out, enjoy, learn. Um, and the entrepreneurs are all doing activations. So there's like honey tastings, rum cocktail making classes. I'll right. pick that one. Um, yeah. For sure. Um, and then like lay making stuff. So it's again, this is just another example of how are we jumping over this lake, jumping over this pond and creating more of those like well-worn pathways mm-hmm. for more companies to be able to get out there and make it easier and easier and easier. Yeah. We have a suggestion oh, okay. yeah. um, for your for a name for your oh yeah I think oh yay uh Robert Honeybacker says for a brand name for vegan cheese how about mac and cheese since it's mac and cheese oh that's wonderful thank you oh. so much Robert yeah, that. that is really great I I do like to play around with that with my like mac and cheese recipe yeah <laughs> like mac mac and cheese but or it could awesome. be one of your products, right? Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like reading is good, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you're going to Mary Monarch too next yes. week. Yes, yes, going to Mary Monarch next week. Um, we've got at least 25 of our companies going, and that's you know, just another great example of opportunities um for folks to um get out there yeah. and, and get the word out. Um so yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of marketing around that, but it's it's neat to just see how this industry has really grown. Um, and I think success breeds success. So as we're helping to share stories of successful entrepreneurs, kids are seeing it, other entrepreneurs. I mean, even with the 160 applications we've had, a third of them were companies that were started in the last two years. So to me, that just means more and more folks yeah. are getting interested in starting their own business and entrepreneurship, which of course we love seeing yeah i know and and yeah especially with um with man up like they're like i feel like you guys are everywhere and just it's just a visual of like there's there's help for you guys you know and and so that you guys are helping so much with that and you know and the farmers markets are popular so they're like oh i can start there and then i can go to man up and 
basically my path. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, you're totally right. It's like, how do you create that pathway and connecting all the resources? So there really is throughout your whole, you know, path of the, the life of the company. Mm -hmm. There's the next piece that's going to be a resource to get to, to the next place. Right. And seeing yeah. that pathway is encouraging. And, and I think UH also has a lot of great programs. Mm -hmm. I know Pace. in agriculture yeah. and yeah, that's and exactly. lots of different areas. So, you know, so that's awesome that there's so many starting, hopefully. So we only have a couple more minutes left with Melly, but um, Melly, maybe you can also kind of talk more about the local product sourcing, because I think I can imagine, like you, you kind of hinted at, it's hard to necessarily find all local products. Do you have any advice or tips on that? I know we've talked about it in the commission a little bit too. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a challenge. So there, there are resources out there, and like, honestly, I think they're kind of defunct because <laughs> there was like a like a platform for folks like farmers to meet producers mm -hmm. like that wouldn't that be so perfect mm -hmm. to have a resource like that yeah and there is something out there it's just it's kind of a chicken and egg thing like if I'm a if I'm a producer and I go on this platform and I look for turmeric and I go on like five times and like nobody's on there I'm not going to go on anymore. Yeah. Right. And then if I'm a farmer and I've got a whole bunch of turmeric and I put it on there and then nobody bites, there's only so many times I'm going to get on my computer and like let everybody know on this platform. So I think there just needs to be a little bit more coordination of getting folks really on that, on a, on a platform that again is a chicken and egg aspect Yeah, where you, you kind of can find what you're looking for, which is important, obviously. Yes. Um, I would think, I think the Department of Ag has some other resources out there. Mm -hmm. um, I know that Sharon Heard sends out those emails and there's a, actually a lot in there on grants um, and other resources. Um, but I would say, you know, as, as you are finding folks like farmers, like really establishing those like really strong relationships. And I think you should definitely go talk to Andrew downstairs. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I will. That's awesome. How could we? Yeah. <laughs> and I think FarmLink has some great resources too. Yeah. 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 yeah I was going to say FarmLink is a great resource, at least to go there and see what um, local companies there are. And then you can reach out directly, possibly. But yeah. it's like a great resource. To and start. it's a great resource because they're selling the product that can be kind of sold, right, at the yeah. grocery store level. Yeah. But it's like all those farmers that have all those off products that are like disfigured, discolored, you know, the kind of stuff that would be really inexpensive and perfect for value add, which is the whole yeah. point of value add. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So um, that's, that's been, that's growing, but I, we do. And also I think um, Pupu has a whole farm out on the North shore and they're actually looking to work with producers to tell them what to grow. Oh yeah. And I know Mahi Pono actually has a lot of off grade stuff that they're doing and shipping over to Oahu. Um, but I think that's more on the fruits and vegetables side. Um, but yeah. And that's a Sydney system. Hawaii Ag. Yeah, Hawaii Ag Foundation is another one that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. State Ag has their value added uh, for, the, for specialty crops every year to get those grants to grow specialty crops. So probably see it in Sharon's emails when she sends it out all the time. Yeah. yeah every year. So there's a limited amount of money that says nationwide. So as soon as you can see it, you try to apply because you never know if it's going to still be there, but it's on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And, and Mary, then Mary Dale from SBA. Oh, sorry. She's here. <laughs> yeah. Talking already. The, she's like, let me, Melly, scoot over. <laughs> um, yeah, I totally agree. And also, you know, when you think about, oh, I can't get it over there from Big Island or it's over on this other island. Like Young Brothers, they have incredible rates um, for ag products. I mean, it's ridiculously cheap. So that should yeah. not be a deterrent at all because it's on Big Island or something. Um, I have one, if you don't mind me switching lanes, just a say, just, I had a question about as far as ramping up production and manufacturing. There's um, two ways to go. One is of course of just, um, different types of equipment and hiring employees or there's co-packers. Mm -hmm. And um, I was wondering if you had any, um, like a list of the co-packers on island. I know that there's first commercial that I've talked with. Peter. 
Yeah. yeah. And super nice, but they don't have um, certain types of equipment that like for, that I would need. Mm -hmm. So I was just curious if you knew of any other co-packers on the island to talk with or um, yeah, just your ideas on that. Yeah, that's always an issue. Yeah. Co-packers here is like, it's, besides Peter, there really yeah. aren't that many. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I think, an area that we need to start to um, build out more from an infrastructure standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, there is the new Wahiwa Value Add Product Development Center, but that's not a co-packer. Okay. That's more um, providing equipment for you to use. Okay, like on large scale? On a large scale. Okay. Yeah. And that's actually, um, I think they're opening on the 12th. April 12th is their official grand opening, which is going to be really awesome. Okay. Um, and once that happens, they have some massive equipment there that okay. are very, it's very specialized. Cool. We actually work with them pretty closely. I'm on their advisory board there too. I know a lot. Um, <laughs> we, they actually also have got an HPP machine, which is a million dollar piece of machinery. Okay. Um, that uh, the point of it is, is to be able to extend shelf life. Okay. with organic product without adding chemicals. Awesome. So that, I don't know if ch how cheese works on that. I mm. do know like hummus is good, salsa is guacamole. Like when you go to Costco and there's like an organic guacamole that lasts for three months. Yeah. And you're like, how does that happen? Yeah, yeah. That's HPP. Awesome. I mean, once you open the pack, it's going to get brown. But like it's, it's in the sealed thing and it yeah. lasts like three months. You're like, how is that even possible? Yeah. My guacamole gets brown in like 20 minutes it's true yeah so um that that machine is just an example of the level of okay. machinery um that's going to be in that center um there's also let's see what else um from a oh there's another there's another commercial kitchen i'm not sure if they're co-packing uh -huh. but at um harbor court in downtown oh yeah that's Hana a kitchen. Yeah, Hana kitchen they are awesome. getting into that i think last time i talked to them which is probably about a year ago. Oh, you should go back in there. They have totally expanded. They, that's what he was talking about, getting into the co-packing. So I know, yeah. Yeah, so. and he knows what he's doing. Yeah, I, yeah. I really respect. Him. I do need to talk to yeah. him. But again. that's that's a definite area that uh, we need more of, co-packing for sure. And yeah. storage. We don't have enough cold storage. Right. right. Um, and just on, do you know of any like equipment expos going on? In yeah. Yeah. So you should talk to Wayne from okay. Innovate Hawaii. Okay. Um, which they should, are they here sometimes? Are they downstairs? Uh, they're not, they're off today. The oh, same yeah. day, which okay. is why we're having a little bit of technical <laughs> issues today, but, um, but yeah. I can connect you with Wayne. For yeah. Okay. There's Wayne and then there's Wayne. There's two Waynes. Okay. But the second Wayne goes by Fred sometimes. Okay. <laughs> anyway, but Innovate Hawaii is an awesome organization. Um, they administer the MAP grant, which okay. I was talking about right. earlier, the uh, Manufacturing Assistance Program, which is yeah. really important from a legislation standpoint, which is what HDC goes for every year is the $6 million, $2 million for the MAP grant. That's mm -hmm. going to give a 20% rebate for local manufacturing, mm -hmm. uh, which is always gets fully utilized. Um, mm -hmm. And it's been game changing for folks to be able to afford machinery that they desperately yeah. need to increase production. Yeah. The second part of the um, legislation is for the accelerator program. So this helps with operations for all of our accelerators that mm -hmm. are supporting businesses. And then the third is for the SBIR. Um, it's more for like the research aspects. And okay. so those that's the that's the main funding that the ledge sometimes provides to support this industry. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes provides. Um wait, I was gonna say one more thing. Oh, oh. So with Innovate Hawaii, besides the map grant, and then I'll let you guys comment. <laughs> I just start getting on my roll. Um, they do. They have an expo every other year. I think okay. it's in Vegas. Okay. But the cool thing about what they do is, I think, I think they debed support folks to go. Okay. But also, um, they they provide a person that can help you to Perfect. navigate because you know you yeah. walk into some oh, crazy convention yeah. center with like a whole bunch of equipment you're yeah. like i don't even know which one's the good one which yeah. one's the junk one like you probably have time to talk to every single yeah person, so this so. person that they provide which is part of their right. funding awesome. um helps you navigate awesome. um which also with the map grant i think there's now starting to track what pieces of machinery everyone's purchased through that grant mm -hmm. so if you're looking at something and they know oh manoa chocolate actually bought that yeah two years ago mm -hmm. we'll talk to dylan and yeah. see what he says right and right. that's that's the kind of connectivity that we want to see more of definitely yeah awesome right, thank cool. you yeah. so much that, thanks thank for having you so much yeah. i really appreciate it um nice to meet you nice to meet you, nice to yeah. meet you. Yeah. i'll tell i'll tell andrew now Thank you so much. Yeah. I look forward How to it. How do I get there's unplugged? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay.
we'll take this a, a no, couple minutes you. break so that SBA can come ready. in and get ready for their presentation. So I'm going to follow her. <laughs> Mary, I know it's hard to follow Melly, but no. you can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> it's kind of warm in here. Is it it just is. Me? I thought it was me. No, no, it is. Maybe you should open the door. Yeah, because you that come over here, it's, it's cold. A state holiday situation that we have. There. Yeah, no there's electricity. Yeah. They're suffering to bring you the information today. <laughs> well, thank you so much. <laughs> I always, oh, I always, always ask about oh, mana. I was going to go to Melly. I don't know. Because oh, there's so I much that like, I like, I'm supposed to know everything about what they do. So, <laughs> I don't know everything they do. Hi, everybody. We're back. Um, and um, this time I'm going to introduce. Um, Mary Dale from the Small Business Administration here in Hawaii. She is the um, business development specialist um, and all around just she's everywhere. I always see her at events and everything. So uh, Mary is very knowledgeable. Um, please do ask questions if you have them. Um, but Mary, I will give it, I will give the floor to you and um, we can talk about business resources locally. Thanks, Eliza. Uh, morning, everybody. I'm assuming it's still morning. I'm losing track of the time. I'm going to try not to take too much of your time because I know some folks have the day off, not I, but obviously you guys are here and you're interested. So we're going to share the information and resources for you as small businesses. So, what a, you know, I know we like to be interactive, but when you're online, we never know if people are listening, taking naps or which for me is perfectly fine, whatever you want to do. So I want to just tell you a little bit about what SBA does. And then you can ask questions either in the chat or unmute yourself however Eliza has it working today, and we'll try to answer those. So for those of that for not familiar with SBA, we're a federal agency. So we are here to assist small businesses. And we usually like to say by the three C's, capital, contracting, and counseling. And so for most of you, I would, you know, guess capital is always going to be something that small businesses need. Whether we're talking about venture capital, we're talking about loans, we're talking about any of those things. So what we like to start talking to people, if you are looking for financing and you don't have a business plan, that should be your first step. I know a lot of times we'll talk to small businesses, the first thing they say when I ask, do you have a business plan? They go, oh, it's right up here. I was like, no, put it right on some paper because though nobody can get it out of your head. And if you're going to need a lender, even a landlord, if you're leasing, a lot of times they're going to want a copy of what the business plan, you know, says. So this is going to help you to is basically a blueprint for your business. Right. So you're going to be able uh, to know where the business is going, where it's going to be now and where you want it to be in the next three to five years. So that business plan is going to be key. But one of the things that are going to be key in there when we're looking to help you with the finance aspect is what, what are the projections, right? So this is what I need the money for and what am I projecting out? How is it going to make me help me expand my business? How is it going to bring in more sales? How am I going to be able to hire more employees? Whatever it may be, that business plan is going to be key in growing the business. And I know... Melly had mentioned exporting. That's always a feel for growth. So maybe in the first year or two, you're doing your business and maybe year three, you're thinking, I want to export. That should be somewhere included. How am I going to be able to do that? Because now I'm looking at, at a whole different time zone in another country, new regulations that we're going to have to look at. So there's a number of different loans that SBA guarantees. So if you're a small business and let's say you're looking at starting a business, a lot of times it's hard to get our guarantee loans through banks. There are banks out there that can assist you with that. But if you're looking for a smaller dollar amount, let's say you're looking between $5,000, $50,000, you just started now, maybe like the young lady said, she's at the farmer's market. You don't need a whole lot, but you need something. Uh, aspect of financing. We do have a micro lender and those micro lenders can lend up to $50,000. Now, currently one of our micro lenders here in Hawaii is CNHA, the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancements. You don't have to be Native Hawaiian to apply for this as a loan through SBA's funds. So you can go directly to them. They have an online application. 
and we're going to be doing some workshops real shortly with them in the next month or so. So look out for that. You can look at the sba.gov slash hi site where we have our local trainings on. So and then those uh, workshops will be there. So for micro lending, that might be better for you. It's a little uh, they take a little more risk because a lot of times it's startup. So that's for them. That's a, that's going to be a risk. Maybe the credit is not where they'd like it to be normally, but it's not terrible either. So that may be one of the avenues you want to look at. But as you grow the business, as you, you become bankable, or you need a larger dollar amount, or you need lending that's going to be more than just term lending, meaning that you get all the money up front for whatever you need to buy or purchase, and then you um, just pay a monthly payment. So sometimes businesses, especially when you're having to do with contractors, they need something that's more of a line of credit. So you may need to meet payroll, you may have inventory, things that are constantly revolving and changing, you may need for that. So those kind of things you need a line of credit for. And this is always good when you're going to a lender to make sure you know what the funds are for, because that's what they're trying to figure out. What do you need the monies for? So what they, they like to use fancy words at banks, you know, what are the use of the proceeds? Like, uh, just say, Oh, you mean what do I need the money for? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's translate this into English. Bankers have a real, real weird speak. So I learn their language sometimes. And also, as far as you know, you got to have your balance sheet, these kind of things. We do have resource partners that can help you for free. And I apologize to Eliza, I wasn't on earlier, so I don't know if she had any of our resource partners from our Women's Business Center, which is our Patsy T. Meek Center. But we just touched on it, so if you want to okay. get into it more. Yeah, so that those are our Small Business Development Center. And if you are a veteran or a spouse of a veteran, we have our Veteran Business Outreach Center. All of those people right now are off today shameful <laughs> but anyway so they're but they're available normally you can call them up their services are free to you you can have counseling appointments with them you can schedule that they have an online intake form each of them um, our veteran business outreach center actually has uh, what they call a boots to business training that they do on base you know so if you want to uh, sign up for that you can do that as well but all of them will offer free service, helping you with those, with a business plan, with the financial statements. They'll review that, those kind of things. And they also have usually, you know, some kind of template that you can utilize. So you say so you needed a cash flow statement. You don't have to build it from scratch. They'll help you do that. And you'll be able to plug in the numbers that you need for that. So it's always good to do that when we're talking about capital. Because I've not met a business yet, and maybe there's some on here today, that have enough money to run their business. So every time I turn around, I'm like, oh, I just need a little bit more. So we're also out there trying to do workshops on managing the business better. Because if we continue to you give you money and you keep coming back, there may be a management issue as opposed to a money issue and how you manage those funds. So that's why we're out there trying to help you with that. So I say the second one, and that's where the resource partners that I just mentioned kind of come into play is because that's the counseling aspect of it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we offer their, their services and we will sit down uh, on occasion actually with you as well. I currently myself, I do some counseling out on the West side. That's part of my territory uh, within peace. They're a native Hawaiian organization that we funded an entrepreneurial center uh, there. And then once a month, any business that wants to come out there that has questions, whether it's starting, expanding uh, on their business, if you need financing, if you're thinking about, you know, getting into the government contracting, we offer that counseling service free there. So you can always give us a call and we can set up an appointment with that. When it comes to food businesses, and I'm assuming some, a lot of you may be on here today, uh, we are going to have a workshop that's coming up in Kapolei Holly. And I, you know, forgive me, I didn't bring in the list today, but like Eliza said earlier, she has all my information and she can get you in touch with me and we can get you that list. For uh, in Kapolei Holly, every month we are having a workshop on various topics. And this next uh, 
next Thursday, we're having on marketing. We're calling it marketing madness because there's all kinds of marketing you may need. It may not just be social media, maybe old school marketing, maybe how to, you know, find influencers that can promote your product. Whatever aspect you think you need to learn about marketing will be covered. And after we have that couple hours workshop, you can meet one-on-one -on -one with those experts to talk about your product in, in general. So uh, if you're interested in that, you know, again, Liza will follow up, get you the information. And the following month, we have one of our home-based businesses. So those businesses that are home-based, and maybe you're thinking about, should I be moving into a storefront? For those kind of things, we're going to have some of that. And that's going to be doing Small Business Week. So we're probably going to do something special with that workshop as well. And then I think that's followed by how to buy a business. We get that call so much, like, how do I buy a business? What should I be looking for with that? So we're going to have an attorney, a CPA, a person that does valuation for the business, and a banker. All the people that are part of that project to say, okay, these are the things you're going to need before you go buy a business. Because a lot of times we'll talk to folks who are like, oh, I want to buy a business. I was like, oh, have you seen the financial? No. Oh, the tax return. Mm -mm. So how do you know the business is even worth what it says? Well, I see a lot of people going in there all the time. I was like, how do you know they got to go to the bathroom? So these are the things. <laughs> yeah, the real, you got to the Exactly. You got to know what it actually is, the numbers say, and how real they are. Yeah. Because even though they say, I want 300000 you go to that bank to try to finance that deal, and they go, no, it's actually worth 50000 mm -hmm. So before you get in trouble, we want to try to help you with that. So buying a business, if you're thinking about that, that's the other one we're going to be having. Um, and we've got one on uh, government contract and certification. But I think in between there is the recipe for success recipe. So for food businesses, see what, see what we did there. But, um, <laughs> so, uh, but it's going to be about everything. So we're going to have somebody with the Department of Health there talking about those things. Um, maybe somebody who is uh, running a business that's you know, one of your, you know, um, entrepreneurs that would say, I have a food truck or I have a, you know, storefront or I, you know, wherever I do, how I do my food business. So we try to have all aspects of that so we could find out. And then always the financing, because the number one failed business, unfortunately, are usually restaurants and food type businesses, but they never stop opening. So somebody's doing well at them. So mm -hmm. yeah. And then we go into our government contracting work. This is where you, a lot of people see a lot of money coming in, but it's a lot of overhead and it's a lot of work, especially if you want to do business with the government. I know it's shocking to believe that the government likes paperwork. No, no, I know. I'm down to say, <laughs> but that. So, well, one of the things we do with that, you got to be registered. You know, I was just having a conversation the other week. And the folks that are from our disaster, they're going to come on after me, actually introduce us to FEMA. And they're talking about, you know, work on Maui and people, you know, want to make sure local businesses get that work. But in that conversation, what they relayed to me, you know, we want to get that work out to local businesses. But what we're starting to find out is a lot of them are not registered in SAM.gov. If you want to do work for the federal government, it's mandatory, whether you're small, medium, large business. So we're out there trying to get businesses done. We did it last week. We had a workshop at a Kapolei Holly, uh, no, I'm sorry, a Kapolei at UH campus. And we did it at the computer lab where we walked them step-by-step with one of our partners with Apex Accelerator who did walk them through so they could get registered and then they'll be ready at least on that aspect, to start doing business with the federal government. So for all of you guys that are out there that think you may be interested in that, that's going to be the first step. And then we, you know, kind of walk them through some other steps, how to, you know, do a capability statement that basically is sort of like a resume of your business. What are your qualifications for this? What kind of past performance do you have to show us you can do these kind of jobs that you're going to be bidding on? Um, if you have any SBA certification, are you woman-owned certified? Are you 8A? Are you veteran-owned? The number of these certifications will help when it comes to some of the contracts. So for those that are interested in that, you know, you can always give us a call. We can sit down. We can go over and to find out if those certifications are worth your while too. Because a lot of times people think, oh, I'm woman owned. I, I should get this certification. Well, what do you do? 
Is it going to help you? Does the government buy that service and how often they buy it? Because if it's something they buy once a year and you want to keep giving the government paperwork for the rest of your days, which I know you love to do, um, you might want to think about that. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure it's going to benefit your business too. Because sometimes we'll talk to businesses like, oh, I want to know I'm certified, but you know, I do retail or I do catering. Well, that's probably not going to help a lot of times in some mm -hmm. of the businesses we work with. But there's a private certification that if you do supplier diversity, which like Disney or some of the hotels here, they use those. There's a, unfortunately, there's a fee attached to that. Okay. But those people, that if you're doing business with them, that might be a better one for you. So just want to find out what the business is. You know, we, t we try to have roundtables about these discussions, try to make you realize that this just because somebody else you knew it benefited them what was their business how different it is from yours is it going to be beneficial to you so i don't think anybody wants to just fill out paperwork maybe they like that i don't know eliza she looks like she likes to I do, do. I paperwork that's her job <laughs> but <laughs> but me personally not and i would say most of you don't want to do that so i'm going to pause and see if anything is in the chat and it's not no, yeah. but I had a question. Um, is all of this is this a low fee or is this to free or how do we? So any of the things about the the certification, all of that that we work with, we're a federal agency, so we don't charge any of that. Any of the classes that we do ourselves, maybe sometimes our partners may charge a small fee for some of their workshops. But as far as the agency itself, when we put it on, it's always free. Okay. So any of the ones I mentioned that are in Copley Holly, we do them in conjunction with a co-sponsorship co that we have with the city and county office of economic revitalization. So they're a city partner. They're also a uh, you know a government agency. So there's no charge for these mm -hmm. services. It's free. It's your tax dollars. Yeah. When, you, when you say where well, my tax dollars are going, how can I use them? That's how you can use them. So. <laughs> and I'm sure Nika, who came in from a case office, she loves to hear that your tax dollars are being utilized. <laughs> yeah, you guys are paying me. <laughs> you give me a raise. No, <laughs> but that's, you know, we just want people to know the availability that it's out there. We're meeting with lenders each day, trying to convince them as well to get more lending out there in the small business community, that there are small businesses that need the financing. And I think Melly said earlier, even because during COVID, people are still opening up business. So mm -hmm. if you can open up during that time and you're thriving or you're making it work, hey, how many other challenges can you beat when it comes to that? Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know, um, if you have questions at a later time, you know, always give us a call or email me. Eliza will follow up that. If you run into me on the street, I'll pretend like I don't know you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, you know, just want to make sure that you get the, get the information out there to you guys. Anybody that, you know, you have questions, if you're too shy to ask, then the day you can email us directly and we'll get back to you. So. And they can sign up on your website. For the classes oh it's actually on oer so i would have the i'll get that to you okay yeah so she's talking about the office of economic revitalization here in oahu mm -hmm. um but if you're on the neighbor islands you guys work with the other offices over there too so we do as a matter of fact as you mentioned that next month you know we're supposed to be in hilo we have a co-sponsorship also with department of uh, transportation, where we're doing a two-day workshop on certifying small businesses, what you need to do, and we're going to be doing that at the Innovation Center in Hilo on the 23rd and 24th. So um, if you're interested, the Department of Transportation, that flyer, we can get out, we'll get it to Eliza, she can send it out to you guys, and it'll show you how to register. We just did that same one last month on Maui when we had between 50 and 60 folks show up for that. So if you want to learn about that, want to find out how to grow your business, expand it, if if that opportunity is for you, then I would suggest you come to that workshop. Because it's not going to just be me as exciting as that, as you can tell, would be. Uh, we're going to have Department of Transportation. We'll have uh, U.S. Army Corps. We're going to have the National Park. Um, talk about how do you do business with them. 
we're going to have a lender that comes in. We have a person talking about bonding, you know, what kind of bonding you're going to need if you're going to be doing this kind of work. We're trying to get all aspects of it there for you to find out what's what's available. So, and that being said, I'm going to turn it back over to you. <laughs> Um, I just had one other question for you. Um, I think one of the things, too, that's really good for uh, maybe you can talk to it a little bit is um, to have some experience working with the county in order to get a federal contract. It kind of helps, right, to have that um, experience. So I think what she's trying to say, if you don't already have federal government experience, it's good to have subcontracting experience. So, you know, a lot of times when the federal government puts out contracts, they're huge. So let's just say a large, we'll say the one for Pearl Harbor, you know, that dry dock one, that's a huge one. Obviously, billion dollar, you can't do that. But that company itself that has that Hawaii dredging as, or that, and what they're trying to do is they have to meet a goal. When the federal government says you put out a contract over 750,000 federal funds, you have to subcontract a certain portion out that to small business. And since that's under uh, the state, even though they've got federal funding, Department of Transportation, their DBE program has a goal. So if you're a DBE certified company, they need to utilize a certain uh, amount of small businesses that fit that criteria in order to sustain that uh, contract. So I would say if you're you know, a small business that does whatever they, services they may need for that dry dock, whether it's construction or painting or welding or whatever they do, you might want to get in touch with them because you can help them meet that goal to keep that contract. And any kind of federal contract uh, that you would see that's out there, they have those same goals and they break those down differently. So if it's federally, all federal funded, they would say, if you're looking for subcontracted opportunities, they have a 5% they have to reach for women-owned certified companies. They have a 3% for service-disabled veterans. It's another 5% for um, a small business. And I think the latest number for the president put out, I think I want to say 13% for minority-owned businesses. So you're helping them to meet it. And what I always try to tell folks, if you're looking online, on the sam.gov and you're looking for contracting opportunities, there's an opportunity that you're not going to bid on because it's too large. But let's just say for that particular thing, they have a walkthrough. They say you can register to walk through for this. You want to show up at that walkthrough because you want to meet those large businesses or whomever who's going to be bidding on them. Give them your card or your capability statement that says, hey, I'm a small business. I'm also a woman owned. You know, if you utilize me on this project, you know, you're not only helping a small business, but you're helping yourself by meeting your subcontracting goal of that, you know, woman-owned business, 5%, and small business, you know, 5%. So they get to count you kind of double for it. So you definitely want to take advantage of that. And then when you start to be able to try to be the prime or the general contractor, that gives you more opportunity because now you have these subcontracting uh, things under your belt that says, I can do jobs of this size. As you can tell, Mary is the wealth of information. Yeah. <laughs> Highly encourage you to reach out to her on the SD Hawaii. And um, I will, after this webinar, um, we will send a link to this entire webinar. We'll also send information from um, about SBA too, so you can reach out to them. Um, but thank you so much, Mary. No problem. Appreciate it. Always good to see you. Um, and then we have um, Cynthia Cowell coming up from SBA. Um, she is going to talk about disaster team economic injury disaster loans. Um, and so we're going to shift over to Cynthia. Make sure she's still on with us. Are you there, Cynthia? Yes. Hi, this is John Crowley. I, I'm going to present today, if that's okay, if, um, if you see my, um, if you see me on Zoom there. Yeah, do you want to start your video so we can see you? Oh, I think you're blocking him now. There he is. Okay. <laughs> Hi, John. Sorry about that. So we have Hi, John. Cynthia's here too. Oh, Cynthia's here too. Okay, we have both of them. Even better. Even better. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been enjoyable listening to the presentation. And um, I just saw Mary last week. She visited uh, the federal building where we uh, we are located. 
uh, for this disaster. So my name is John Crowley. I'm a public information officer with the Office of Disaster Recovery and Resilience for the SBA. And Cynthia Cowell is the lead public information officer uh, with, with this office. And um, what I'd like to do is share my screen where we have a slide presentation where we can review a few slides if that's okay. Eliza, we can't hear you. You can't hear us? Uh, now oh, I can. now I can. Yeah. Is it okay for him to share his screen with you? Um, make sure you um, share with us. We request to share. John, at the bottom of the screen, there's a share. Ah, there we are. Okay. If you would, John, click. There you go. Uh, is that showing a full screen, the uh, slide deck? No, it's not. There, now it is. Now it is, yes. Love technology. <laughs> okay, yes. So thank you. Um, again, my name is John Crowley and Cynthia Cowell is online as well to um, present this information and answer any questions that you have in regards to this. Um, the Office of Disaster Recovery and Resilience, our mission is to connect individuals and businesses with federal low interest disaster loans during times of disaster. And one of the reasons that we're here um, deployed to uh, Hawaii right now is because of the Maui wildfires. So we're helping to um, help the businesses recover and rebuild and, and become more resilient for future disasters, um, both here in, uh, on Maui as well as um, Hawaii in general. So what I'm gonna do is just um, go through some slides and then see if anybody has any questions. And this is really for awareness and education that um, these uh, disaster loans are available to businesses of all sizes. And um, so we'll just review some of these um, disaster loan programs as we, um, as we go through the slide deck. The SBA has uh, a few different primary uh, disaster loans. There are business loans for physical damage where businesses can borrow up to $2 million to repair or replace um, their real estate or their inventory and equipment for their business. And then there's economic injury loans for businesses as well. And businesses can borrow, again, up to $2 million to uh, help meet disaster caused working capital needs. And the $2 million is the, would be the maximum for both types of loans, whether it be a physical damage uh, loan or an economic injury loan for businesses. And then, and just as an overview, the SBA also offers home loans for um, physical damage again. So if, if you're on Maui during the times of wildfire and you had, um, um, uh, destruction or um, damage to your home, you can borrow up to $500,000 to repair or replace the primary residence of the person that was affected by the fires. And then we also have uh, personal property loans where, where people can repair or replace personal property and they can, they can borrow up to $100,000 to um, to help with those needs. And that includes vehicles too, because we all know that a lot of vehicles were lost during the fire. And then as a tertiary type loan, there's mitigation loans to help, to help um, prevent future, you know, help prevent against future disaster damage. Today's focus we're gonna focus on is the economic injury disaster loans for businesses. And these loans, as I mentioned just previously is you can borrow up to $2 million to, um, to cover working capital. And working capital would be paying off fixed debts, um, your payroll, accounts payable, or other bills that um, cannot be paid because of the disaster's impact. So these are um, 
these are helpful loans to businesses that have been directly affected. And they're also, I think one of the other important aspects of this loan is that you didn't have to be physically located on Maui. You could be anywhere in the state. So if you have a business here on Oahu, or if you have a business on one of the other islands and you were uh, supplying or were somehow affected by the Lahaina fires, then you can apply for one of these loans and um, be considered to, to help your business continue during this time of crisis. Some of the features of the loans are very accommodative and the, the terms are very favorable as the, the government is trying to help during this time of crisis and disaster to help the, the community recover and rebuild. And so these are just some of the features we can just, I'll scan through them. Um, they're low interest rates, they're fixed interest rates, and they're set up to not exceed 4%. So it's a very favorable, favorable uh, rate. And then there's no cost to apply. The terms are flexible depending on the amount, um, anywhere from 15 to 30 years. There's no prepayment penalty. There's no closing costs. And we're trying to make it as accommodative as possible so that there's an 18 month deferment and there's no accrued interest for 12 months. Now, the SBA loans, um, I'll just read through these. these. These are some suggested reasons of why it might be, fa might be a good idea to consider uh, one of these loans. Um, these disaster loans are the only time the agency actually makes direct loans. And as I mentioned before, the, 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 the rates are very favorable. And it can also fill the gap between insurance coverage for your business or or your um, or other types of insurance, and it just it just helps during fill those gaps that that may not be covered by insurance. And these are direct loans straight from the treasury, like I said, and they're 15 to 30 year terms, so they're they're favorable they're favorable terms. Um, the SBA loan proceeds ensure that the collateral of the property returns to its original state of repair and does not further deteriorate. So that protects your investment as well. The economic injury disaster loan proceeds could be used to make payments to existing debt to keep current. So that helps with your credit. And then private uh, sector partners, let's stress this during declaration referred by FEMA the Federal Emergency Management Agency, SBA must apply or the process stops. If declined, then referred back to FEMA, and in most cases to be considered for additional FEMA aid. Uh, Cynthia, do you want to elaborate or clarify any of those points that I made? Sorry, I was having hot problems with my mute button. It was misbehaving. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to say that um, that as far as the private sector partners, this is for homeowners and renters only. Uh, they, they, if they are referred by FEMA to SBA, then they must apply. Now, for homeowners and renters, if they're declined, then they will be referred back to FEMA in most cases, and um, they would be eligible for more FEMA assistance. This is just for this declaration. Any declaration made, I believe it's after um, February of this year, uh, it is not a requirement for everyone to apply to FEMA or, or to SBA. And um, it, it, won't, it won't make a homeowner or renter ineligible for assistance if they don't apply to SBA. Um, it's important to note that the maximum that FEMA can lend you is a little over 40000 and the maximum SBA can lend you as a homeowner is $600,000. Um, so it's, it's an important difference to, to know. Now, um, if you incur debt as a result of the declaration, let's say you took out a, a, a HELOC or a business um, line of credit, the 
you can use the SBA loan to pay off that part of your debt that is directly due to the disaster. Uh, the low rate for businesses is 4%. For private nonprofits such as churches and other nonprofit organizations, it's I believe John, isn't it two point three seven five percent this time? Yes, two point three seven five, right? Okay, and that is determined by the prime rate at the time of the disaster, and it changes quarterly. So um, this this is a very favorable rate, and uh, I'm going to let John kick it off again. Thank you, Cynthia. I appreciate your um, your experience and sharing that information. So the SBA has multiple locations that we've opened up um, during this time of disaster on Maui. And so there is the Disaster Recovery Center at the Lahaina Civic Center, where we have customer service representatives to help with um, both the physical damage loans as well as the economic injury loans. And then we also have locations, two locations in Kihei at the 590 Lipoa Parkway where people can go in for um, assistance with their economic injury disaster loans as well as the physical damage loans. And then right here across the street at 521 Ala Moana, we have um, a business recovery center where businesses that may have been affected here on Oahu or any of the other islands and need help with economic injury disaster loans can go in and um, get assistance with filling out their application if their business was affected. SBA refers to client businesses applicants to SB, SBDC business counselors. So if at a time the SBA is unable to approve a business loan um, due to lack of repayment or unsatisfactory credit history or insufficient information, the SBA will direct the applicant to the Small Business Development Center as a resource to help them and, and provide support. Um, the SBA decline letter includes an SBDC referral, and SBA offers applicants who are declined six months to request reconsideration for a disaster loan. So the SBDC counselors can assist applicants when they request reconsideration, and SBDC can guide the applicants to other resources that may be available. Uh, in addition, uh, would be counseling. And all of these services are free of charge as we're trying to help the businesses um, recover and rebuild uh, for Lahaina as well as other disasters. Now the SBA has resource partners and these are very important. Uh, just providing assistance like the SBDC, the Women's Business Center, SCORE, and the Veterans Business Outreach. And, and so these are business, uh, business resource partners that are available all free of charge and to help them during this time of crisis. Cynthia, is there anything you would like to share or add in, um, in regards to our business partners? Um, yes, just to go back to the, our locations in Hawaii. We have the uh, Business Recovery Center on Maui, or in Honolulu, and any business that had to leave Maui because of the fire, maybe they relocated to Honolulu, or um, they have family that they're staying with. Any business or homeowner or renter can come into the Honolulu BRC, Business Recovery Center, and get help with their applications. We have computers set up so that, that uh, I know people lost their computers in the fires too. Um, now, as far as uh, uh, the SCORE and, and, uh, and SBDC help, these people, the SCORE, I'm sure you're familiar with them, is retired executives or retired entrepreneurs. They can give counseling. Let's say people decide that this might be the time to go into business and be a new business. 
and VBOC, Women's Business Center, and SCORE can all help, and SBDC, can all help if you're trying to start a new business. They can guide you to where you need to go. And so can our district office. Mary Dale, I know, is there, my good buddy. And um, she uh, she will, we, we will later on in this presentation give you the information for the the uh, direct the district director's office, but I'm sure you're very familiar with it. Um, and that's all I had to say. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, India. Yes. Yeah, so the SBA Office of Disaster Recovery and Resilience, which we represent, um, this is the contact information. We have customer service at 800-659-2955. And then we can also, uh, you can also click at sba.gov and go forward slash disaster, as well as email disaster customer service at sba.gov to get in touch with, um, with this particular office if you have a need or have any questions. And then the SBA Region 9 Hawaii District Office, this is Mary's office. They cover Arizona, California, Hawaii, as well as Nevada and the Pacific Territories. And they are right here in Honolulu, of course. And so we appreciate Mary and uh, her partnership with, with our office as well. So that's um, the end of our presentation. We just wanna be available for any questions if anybody does have any. And uh, feel free to just let me know if you do. Well, thank you guys so much. It's a lot of good information. Um, do you think um, is there is there anything specific to you know newer businesses if they're interested in applying for these loans um, that they should know? Yes, uh, they they should. If they have any question at all, or if they think they might qualify for an economic injury disaster loan, don't talk yourself out of applying because. We can. We will make the decision. I, I can't tell you how many businesses go out of business because they thought, I don't want to be committed to a loan for 30 years. I've already got a loan on my house. Or I already have a mortgage on my business. I can't pay two mortgages. SBA has the ability to refinance your existing mortgage if it will help you to qualify for an SBA loan. And often, we will pay off or pay down someone's mortgage. It's just something that you need to let us know if you're interested in that. But I, I tell everyone, apply, apply, apply. The worst we can do is say no. We haven't taken children as collateral yet, and I don't think that's going to happen. But anyhow, you, just if you have any clients who are wondering if they should apply because they're in Honolulu, and they supply items to Maui hotels, for example, and they were shut down for several weeks. Um, they can, they could qualify for an economic injury disaster loan. And you don't have to have been in business for several years. We do take new businesses as long as we can show that you had had a plan to be in business prior to the wildfires. John, do you have anything? No, I think that's good information. Um, yeah, so we welcome new businesses to uh, to ask questions. They can call, click, or come by, and just try to see if if it would be advantageous for them. Um, it's only during these times of disaster that these disaster loans are available. So we just encourage people to to uh, just just think about it and and ask questions to see if they're individual situation would be beneficial for this type of loan to help them get through, to help them um, rebuild their existing new business or pivot. They may have to make a pivot, um, whether it be location or, the, or a different type of business. So um, just explore all avenues and the SBA is trying to, trying to be accommodative and help them. Let me and know if you have any other questions. Oh, it's also important for people to understand that it doesn't cost anything to apply. It doesn't cost anything to ask a question. And it may be most advantageous to your business. And if they don't want to talk to disaster people, they want a local person, I'm going to tell everyone to call Mary. No. <laughs> <laughs> I but I, I, 
I would I would recommend that if you have clients that have questions that you don't have the answers to right now, that you go ahead and give them SBA's number and they can call and talk to us. We don't take applications over the phone and we don't have an app like FEMA does, but the application itself is not all that difficult. And I know that a lot of business owners have applied for loans before. It's no different than applying for another loan, other than we are tasked by the government to provide as much assistance as we can. And I tell you, when I was processing loans out during Hurricane Katrina, I had I, I was brand new and I was declining loans right and left because I used to work for mortgage companies. And uh, they called me the queen of denial. And I got pulled into the boss's office who said, no, it's our job to say yes as much as we can. You need to find a way to make these people qualify. So it's, it's, uh, it's important for people to understand that we're not just out to collect your information and make you pay through the nose. We're, we're just trying to help as much as we can. And, and our jobs are paid by the American taxpayer. So it, it, we don't work on commission. We don't have a lot of uh, points or, or fees that you need to pay to apply. So, um, yeah, just apply, apply, apply. That's my main message. Thank you, Cynthia. And another thought I had, Eliza, was that if you are on Maui and there's another location at the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement where we have a couple of SBA representatives there to, to help um, to help folks that may be more comfortable asking questions at the CNHA office. Um, so that's available as well. And the uh, another thing that I thought about was that as of uh, yeah, Cynthia has been here, I think since August 11th, the fires were August 8th. And since, since this disaster started, the SBA has approved a total of $295 million in, in loans, and that's for homeowners, businesses, and uh, renters. And of that $295 million, uh, $192 million was for homeowners and renters to help them with physical property damage. And then the remaining amount was for business loans. So the SBA is the primary source of money to help rebuild uh, rebuild the, the community after this um, tragic fire. Please let me know if you have any other questions or if Cynthia wants to contribute. All right, well, thanks you guys so much. Um, it's a lot of good information. And I know SBA also has other loans for businesses besides disaster loans too. So. Um, I think that they can talk to Mary or from Mary again. <laughs> um, exactly. But um, highly recommend everybody reach out to them. Um, I will say from the chamber perspective, working with the SBA here has been really great. Um, it's not a big, it doesn't feel like a big federal agency with a lot of people and layers. It feels like we can talk to them. I, you know, Cynthia is always accessible. So is Mary. So highly recommend you reach out to them and, and call them anytime. Um, and uh, we'll send out their contact information as well. So um, with that said, I think we're come to the end of our webinar. And I just want to thank everybody for attending today. Um, thank you, our speakers, for sharing so much good information. Um, as I said, I will send out uh, contact information and links and things like that and a link to this webinar as well um, post uh, this event. Um, so thank you again. And then we'll see you on April 12th with Olin Lagan, and he is from Purple Maya. He will talk a lot about venture capital um, and just starting businesses. He has started several businesses and can answer a lot of really important questions. So highly recommend you um, attend that one as well. Um, but thank you, everybody, so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.